39 lovely ladies and 39 amazing stories. Stick around and find out what makes this one of my very favorite modern sets. On November 13, 1986, Germany issued two stamps of a new Definitive series, Definitives being the American term for the workhorse stamps that are printed in the millions and are sold year after year, carrying the bulk of the mail, That's as opposed to commemorative stamps, which are usually just printed in one run of a few hundred thousand, and when they're gone, they're gone. Over the next 17 years, 37 more stamps would be added to the series until the last one was issued in January of 2003. Somewhat unusually, the set ran count concurrently with another definitive set of historical sites, which ran from 1987 until 2004. From the outset, though, let's make sure we have the name of the set straight. It's called Women in German History, as opposed to Famous German Women, because several of the subjects are foreign nationals who nonetheless made their mark and are best known for the work that they did while living in Germany. The fields of endeavor covered by these ladies covers a wide spectrum from politicians to scientists to artists and entertainers and cover almost a 400 year period from 1627 to 2002. The beginning of our timeline is represented by the Countess Louisa Henrietta of Orange, the Dutch-born daughter of the Prince of Orange, who, at the age of 19, married Frederick William, the Elector of Brandenburg and the Duke of Prussia. And at the latest end, we have the German actress, singer, and writer Hildegard Kneff. All of the stamps were designed by the late Gerd Arendt, some of them with the assistance of his son, Oliver. They were all recess printed, which means that six artists engraved the stamp designs into steel dies whose surface area is the same dimension as, this, uh, as the actual postage stamp. During the printing process, ink collects in the recessed lines and the finished stamp winds up with raised lines of ink, which you can feel with your fingers. Over the course of the series, six different engravers worked on the stamp designs, 14 of them being done by Wolfgang Maurer, 10 of them by Jacek Kanyor, and 10 of them being divided among three other engravers. And now, if you don't mind, I'll have to look at my notes to give you the names. They are Hans Joachim Fuchs, Egon Faltz, and Lothar Luke. And then one lone woman engraver had a stamp design of her own, the uh, aforementioned Louise Henrietta of Orange. Four other stamp designs are uncredited by uh, German Post. Over the lifetime of the series, two events happened which necessitated some minor changes in the stamps, none of which affected the actual design of the subjects. First, in 1995, the Bundespost, or the Federal Postal Service, was privatized, becoming Deutsche Post AG. This resulted in the inscription on the stamps being changed from Deutsche Bundespost to Deutschland, as you can see on these two. The second change came when Germany adopted the euro currency. At the end of 2000 and the beginning of 2001, four new stamps were issued with the euro currency on them, but to ease the transition to the euro, they also included the old Fennig values. Then in 2002 and 2003, the final four values of the set were issued featuring just the euro currency denomination. So let's take a closer look at a few of these amazing women. First up is Maria Marion, also known as Anna Maria Sibylla. She was born in 1647 in Frankfurt am Main, she was a naturalist and a nature artist, known for her illustrations of insects and plants. Her work on insect development and the transformation of insects through the process of metamorphosis contributed to the advance of entomology in the late 17th and early 18th centuries. Her work is noted for its scientific accuracy and for bringing a new standard of precision to scientific illustration. Dorothy Erxleben was born in 1715 and she grew up in a time when it was illegal for women to practice medicine. 
Unfortunately for little Dorothy, that's all she ever dreamed of doing in her life. She faced one obstacle and roadblock after another, but she persevered, and eventually in 1754, at the age of 39, she got her medical degree and became Germany's first degreed medical doctor. Cécile Vogt was born into a wealthy French family. While in France, she met her husband-to-be, Oscar, and moved with him to Germany, where she collaborated with him in neurological studies for 60 years. She was the first woman to be nominated for the Nobel Prize in Medicine in 1922 and received a total of 13 nominations along with her husband, Oscar, but they never were awarded the prize. Probably the most well-known name in the set is that of Marlena Dietrich, the film actress who is known for her ultra-sultry look and her distinctive singing voice. She was discovered by Paramount Pictures and brought to America, where she became the highest, one of the highest paid actresses in the 1930s, and she was eventually declared the ninth greatest actress of the classic Hollywood era. There are many more ladies I could talk about, such as Clara Schumann, the wife of Robert Schumann, the classical music composer, who was a classical music artist in her own right. And then there's Fanny Hensel, who was the sister of Felix Mendelssohn, another classical music composer. And then there's the youngest member of this group, Sophie Scholl, who at 21 years of age was beheaded by the Nazis for her resistance work during World War II. As I've said, this is one of my very favorite modern sets. These miniature engraved portraits are just exquisite little works of art, and the vibrant colors are just a delight for the eyes. When I finished my mint set, I didn't want to leave these ladies, so I decided to put together a used set also. The only problem is, some of these are CTOs, you know, those hybrids that are neither mint nor used. They're just canceled to order. And replacing those CTOs with postally used copies will just give me an excuse to extend my stay with these lovely ladies. And what happens when I finally complete my used set? Well, I've got that covered too. I'm going to find them all on cover. I doubt if I'll find them all, but it will be fun looking for them. One more note about the set is that Berlin offered a parallel series of stamps that was identical except for, the, of course, the inscription of Berlin on the face of the stamp. Seventeen of them were issued before the Berlin Wall finally came down and making the rest of the set moot. So what do you think? Have I piqued your interest enough in these lovely ladies to start a collection of your own? Let me know in the comments below and stick around for the slideshow at the end, which will show you the complete set. And then please hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you can get notified of future episodes. Until then, this is Ted the Talking Stamp Collector wishing you happy stamping.